All right, now we're gonna do part two of our little um, battery backup system. So here's our load. This is what we're powering. It's a wireless, or not wireless. It's a wired Pee Edge router, Ubiquity. Now this guy is rated for uh, 2.4 or 24 volts at two and a half amps, and that's the adapter that comes with this, two and a half amps. Uh, now I've never run these things at full power. I usually put one Pee device on it, but what I've read. Uh, on the forums online is if you run this at full power that two and a half amp, amp adapter doesn't put out enough juice and it can act a little funky when you're running uh, all four devices. It's a passive PoE device so it's just going to pass through the voltage directly to the ports. So uh, nothing really fancy. But it comes with that two and a half adapter. We're not going to use that. I bought this on eBay. I think it cost me $12. It is 24 volts, regulated power supply, that's what we need, uh, at 5 amps, which is double the uh, rating of the edge router. Now the voltage needs, uh, if you don't know about voltage and amperage, the voltage needs to be exactly the same. This can't be different. So our whole system is 24 volts. The battery setup is 24 volts, the charge controller is 24 volts, and the end device is 24 volts. It has to all be that. Current uh, is used on a per usage basis. So this number on a supply needs to be bigger than the load. So this says the supply can put out 5 amps. This device is rated for 10 amps, which I think is actually 10 amps at 24 volts. It doesn't have a wattage rating on it, but I think it's 10 amps at 24 volts, or at 12 volts, which would make it 5 amps at 24 volts. It's likely what it is. And then this guy is 2.5 amps at 24 volts, but it'll have the ability to pull up to 5 the capacity of the 5 amps is there, uh, but he's only going to use what he needs. This can put out 5 amps, which means we can easily charge the batteries and power the edge router at the same time. Alright, so what we're going to do first, we're just going to cut this in half. Uh, my cabinet's only 2 feet across, so this will reach pretty much anywhere. This is plenty and plenty of slack. Cut this in half. We'll figure out what kind of wire this is inside of here when we're done. Usually these have a center wire and uh, a shield wire. So we'll see if I'm right. Oh no, it is not. It is two different wires. So we're going to have to uh, meter these to see which one is which. Alright, so I set it to 20 volts DC. I'm guessing red's going to be hot, but we'll make sure here. Oops, don't short out. No, I just said 200 volts because it's 24 volts, not 12 volts. And I was wrong. White is positive. So I see how it says negative. It just means I have the leads backwards. So if I switch white, it's positive. 24.2 open circuit. So that is going to probably be regulated pretty tight to 24 volts. All right. I'm going to put this on the supply side here. Just loosen this up all the way. When you loosen these, it opens up that little compartment. I just want that open like that. Again, white is positive, which is odd, but we'll roll with it. We'll make sure these get down in there. These are small, so I'm not worried about them fraying out like those giant battery cables we put in. Alright, see there's no fray out at all, and the jacket goes right up to the edge. That's perfect, just like that. No possible way that's going to short out. Right, the last thing we're going to do is the same thing for the supply side. we got to strip this back. All right, one thing I don't know is which is the tip and which is the sleeve. So we do need to figure that out before we hook this up so we don't blow something up. Cannot hook this DC power up backwards. Diagram on the back of the edge router shows right here that positive is the inner part, the tip and negative is the sleeve, the, out, the outer part. So uh, we want to make sure that's negative and that's positive. Now I'm going to guess that this thing is right and white is the tip, uh, but we're going to verify that so I don't blow up my edge router. The way you do that, handy dandy voltmeter, maybe a multimeter, it can be pretty much any kind of voltmeter. I set it on your diode setting, and this one happens to beep when you have it on the diode setting helpful. What I'm going to do is put one of the leads in here like this and then I'm going to touch the other one. Theoretically this should beep. 
That's good. And then if this one beeps too, then you've got a short. So you always test both of them. You know this isn't going to beep. If it's right, that means our positive is this middle part. See yeah. that? And then there's no short. This is why you tin the wires so they don't fray out on you. You don't have to tin these, and they make a little better connection. If you don't, they're just harder to work with. So we're gonna test this real quick. Putting our voltmeter back onto 200 volts DC. And the reason is when you pick volts, you have to pick the, uh, this is the minimum. So 20 volts is less than our minimum. You only do that for 12 volts. So I'm gonna do what I think is right, which is this should be negative and this should be positive. This should show 24 volts. 24 and a half, not perfectly regulated, we'll call that good. We want to look at the exact power coming out of the battery, we can do that. And it looks like it's bridging it. 24.4, so it's not regulating this output. I thought it did, but it doesn't. It's just bridging the output. 24.4. So we're going to plug this in now. We know that this is correct. It's wired up correctly. Directions say to plug this power supply in second. So now this should be putting out 24 volts, and this should be charging the batteries at higher than 24 volts. So we're going to test this. So at uh, 24.3, and this should be much higher. But it's not, it's only putting out 24.3. That's not good. Not much of a charge controller if it doesn't put out enough voltage. Hmm. It's showing the indicator. The little indicator's on, saying that it's actually getting an input, uh, but it is not charging. 24 volts is never going to charge this. That should be sitting up around 27. So we'll leave it plugged into this and see if it actually charges. It may just be taking a while. Uh, so. Uh, we we're just testing the voltage on this. It's been hooked up for, let's say, almost two hours now. Uh, our regulated power supply is putting out 24 volts, 24.3 actually. Uh, our battery is sitting right now at 24.3 also, um, which is where it was before. And our load is still at 24.3. So uh, I think I'm pretty disappointed with this thing. It's not really charging the batteries. Um, if I disconnect the power here, I'll just plug the, the power supply. All right, it's a little light going out. So uh, we've got our little over low light coming on, uh, which is true. These batteries are below 12 volts now. So let's just show that this is dead. Ah. All right, so uh, that's dead. Our battery voltage here is 24 volts exactly. So it is kind of charging it. It's not putting enough power in to charge it. And our output is 24 volts exactly. Of course, that would be the way that is. Um, but this is not charging the batteries. So I'm going to try to find the manual. The manual was like a half a page and it didn't really say anything. I'm going to try to figure out um, what I need to do if I need to push more voltage into this thing uh, in order to get it to charge, but it is not charging.